Good morning. Just a quick off-camera announcement for you here to remind you that I am not here. <laughs> I am on vacation. Pastor Steve, a member here at Emmanuel, will preach and preside in person this Sunday. And here in the online video, I will do most of the liturgy. I'll reuse what can be reused and uh, not and <laughs> add what cannot be reused. And then Pastor Scott from Faith Lutheran in Forreston, even as he presides and preaches there in that congregation this week, he will virtually supply here with a uh, pre-recorded iteration of the same sermon as to allow for me to actually take the Sunday off. So with that, we'll get started. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our comforter, like lost sheep we have gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. By the gift of grace in Christ Jesus, God makes you righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, our teacher and guide, you draw us to yourself and welcome us as beloved children. Help us to lay aside all envy and selfish ambition as servants of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. <laughs> Oh, 
first reading for today comes from the book of Jeremiah, the 11th chapter. It was the Lord who made it known to me, and I knew. Then you showed me their evil deeds. But I was like a gentle lamb led to the slaughter, and I did not know it was against me that they devised schemes, saying, Let us destroy the tree with its fruit. Let us cut him off from the land of the living, so that his name will no longer be remembered. But you, O Lord of hosts, who judge righteously, who try the heart and the mind, let me see your retribution upon them. For to you I have committed my cause. The word of the Lord. Our psalm reading for today comes from Psalm 54. To the leader with stringed instruments, a maskil of David. When the Ziphites went and told Saul, David is in hiding among us. Save me, O God, by your name, and vindicate me by your might. Hear my prayer, O God. Give ear to the words of my mouth, for the insolent have risen against me. The ruthless seek my life. They do not set God before them. Selah. But surely God is my helper. The Lord is the upholder of my life. He will repay my enemies for their evil. In your faithfulness, put an end to them. With a free will offering, I will sacrifice to you. I will give thanks to your name, O Lord, for it is good. For he has delivered me from every trouble, and my eye has looked in triumph upon my enemies. A psalm to the Lord. Our New Testament reading for today comes from the book of James, the third chapter. Who is wise in understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your craving, your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it, so you commit murder. And you covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly, in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. The Word of the Lord. Our Gospel for today comes from the book of Mark, the ninth chapter. They went on from there and passed through Galilee. He did not want, any, he did not want anyone to know it. For he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum. And when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent. For on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. He sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them. And taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. 
Well, hello, I'm Pastor Scott Ralston. This is Faith Lutheran Church. And also coming out to Emmanuel at Payne's Point this week. It is the 17th Sunday after Pentecost. Good to be with you today. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good night, whenever we got you. And welcome to another day held gently in the loving arms of God. Beloved, how do we measure success? You know, maybe if this was the NFL Combine, we might uh, measure it with how fast we can run or how far we can jump or how much we can lift. If it's on that show, uh, Jeopardy, it might be in how many right answers we can provide in the form of questions. If it's at school, it might be something simple like grades or test scores. If it's at the annual Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest, well, it might be in how many hot dogs and buns you can eat in 10 minutes. Maybe it's something like this. You ever watch that show, America's Got Talent? People from all over, I mean, this show is all over the world now. People come to perform for the chance to be chosen as the number one act of the year. They also receive some prizes along the way. The contestants have this desire to be recognized and rewarded. And maybe that's ex you've had that experience in your own life too. The drive to be number one is often one of the key driving forces in our lives. It propels people to excel at their jobs. It pushes us to reach our goals, maybe ones that we didn't think we could reach. How close we get is often one of the tools that the world uses to measure success. There is another way to measure success, one that's not of this world, and that's the topic of our gospel reading from Mark 9 for today. We sometimes think that we can measure our success the way the world does. We might mistakenly believe that if God receives glory for what we do, then it should be glorious for us too. We have to remember God's faithful servants from the Bible. We've got to remember that their situations were far from easy or glamorous many, many times. Like, for example, Noah. Noah built an ark on dry land and was ridiculed for it. Moses led a people that kept turning back. Josiah restored. Rahab protected at great risk to herself and her family. David conquered. Nehemiah repaired. Ruth stayed when it would have been easier to leave. Jeremiah preached. The poor widow gave sacrificially. The apostles went. The wolves gathered around. And the early church persevered during a time of trial. Ordinary people did extraordinary things. And even though they may have thought that their actions were insignificant at the time. The Lord, through his word, has allowed us the opportunity to see the role that these good people played in the greatest story ever told. And we all have roles to play, too. Recently, I read a, a story about a couple of school kids who had gotten into some trouble. Uh, one of them had gotten into some trouble and was going for a walk. Uh, going to have to walk a few laps at recess. and wasn't taking that news well. This uh, story resonates with me. I, I, was, I was one of those kids that talked in class all the time, and I had to stay in at recess to write, I will not talk in Miss McKinley's class on the board like 33 times before I could go. Okay, anyway, back to the story. So one of these kids had gotten into trouble and was having to walk some laps at recess and really wasn't taking the news well. But another student, who wasn't even a close friend of hers, stepped in to offer some encouragement. And she informed her peer that she wasn't going to have to walk alone. That she would stay by her side and cheer her on the entire time. When the teacher remarked what a wonderful thing she had just done, the student shrugged and replied, It's no big deal. It's what we're supposed to do. That's one of the ways that we are to love our neighbor, right? To come alongside of them when they're going through some struggle. Can you imagine a world if everybody had that same attitude? Our world. Can you imagine what the church would look like if we all practiced that same kind of practice? Because it's those kingdom-minded thinkers who change the world. Those who show kindness and love, who go the extra mile to and forgive, not out of a sense of obligation, not because they're trying to earn their salvation, because we know we can't, not to be seen by others, because it's what we're supposed to do. 
show love. The Lord might also call us to do simple, humble acts that show compassion toward other people and which display God's character. These deeds aren't done for personal gain. They're not done as, <laughs> they are done as we experience God's love for us. And then we direct that love out into the world around us and wrap our loved ones and friends and strangers and communities in God's love. Jesus argues that the way to be successful or get ahead in the spiritual world is to become like a child. In Jesus' time, children and women were seen as little more than property. Little children were considered useless unless they were old enough to help with the housework or help in the field. In other words, they were humble and lowly. The child in this passage represents all of God's people. The greatest people in God's kingdom aren't the rich and the powerful, but the poor and the helpless. Not the ones with the most servants, but those who serve others the most. Jesus argued that if we help those who are humble, lowly, poor, or oppressed, we will be successful from a heavenly point of view. Beloved, you see, Jesus, having sense that his disciples didn't understand at all about this new kingdom, this new life, that he's talking about. He calls them together and explains that the places of honor in his kingdom would be places of servanthood. Jesus was explaining to the disciples that one would sacrifice him or herself for the sake of the other in this new kingdom, in this new life. Now this kind of living for others, living, serving, sacrificing for others, even those people who we have a difficult time liking sometimes, it's not easy. But living a life of sacrifice is never, was never supposed to be easy. It is difficult. It is hard. But it is the way of the cross. It is the way of Jesus. Jesus' life wasn't easy. But he was willing to love the unlovable in his day. He was willing even to forgive those who killed him. Jesus lived a life of sacrifice for others. And he asked us to follow in his footsteps. He asked us to reach out our hands, his hands, to those in need. Amen? Uh, it reminds me of a story about my friend Drew. Every other Friday, Drew counted out some of the money he'd saved up over the past two weeks. He made his way down to work at Joe's Pizzeria in downtown Boston, like he did every day. But Fridays, always put a little extra bounce in his step. He'd smile a little more and things didn't bother him as much because every other Friday, he would share some food with some friends and neighbors out back behind the restaurant. A welcome to all lunch. Doesn't that sound great? He would reach into his wallet, pull out the money that he put aside just for this. He paid for the pizzas himself and then together with his neighbors, 10 to 15 homeless persons and local kids. Drew would break crust and stretch cheese and share stories with people of different ethnicity and sex and age and economic status. That welcome, that service, that love that he shared changed their lives and changed his life too. They changed his life too. I've also been blessed to have another friend from my old church in Rockford. We'll call her Marge. Who met a young woman who had been abused and abandoned, who was out of work and had very little hope. And instead of passing her off, as many might, Marge heard God's call and invited this stranger in. Shared welcome, shared God's love, and helped support her when no one else had. She walked beside her until she was back on her feet and was able to support herself again. That welcome, that service, that love that she shared changed that woman's life. And it changed hers too. And God calls you and I to share such a role also in life. We are called to be servants 
to others, to be servants to God. We are called to put our wants, our desires, our position, our ambition second in order to serve God and our neighbor first. God is calling us to make our lives a sign of his power in this world. God is calling us to serve him with our entire lives, not part of our lives, not sometimes, not just on Sunday morning. <laughs> we are called to be Christ in this world to others, to be the light of hope, to be instruments of justice and love and mercy. God is calling us to servanthood, to give of ourselves and change lives in the process. And we might find that our lives change too. God has turned this idea of being the best on its head. He's taken this idea of what success is, what greatness is, and changed what it means. Today we have seen that Jesus calls us to a life of self-sacrifice. A life where being the greatest means being the greatest servant, where being number one means being a servant to all. Mother Teresa said, prayer in action is love. And love in action is service. Try to give unconditionally whatever a person needs in the moment. The point is to do something, however small, to show that you care through your actions by giving your time. We're all God's children. So it's important to share God's gifts with the world. Don't worry about why problems exist in the world. Just respond to people's needs. We feel that what we're doing is just a drop in the ocean. But that ocean would be less without that drop. The reality is this. We don't know how many days we get on this earth. Maybe we have many, many days left. But well, maybe that day is today. But we don't know. What we do know is that Jesus has called us to serve and to welcome others in his name. And we can make a difference. We can change lives. So let's not let the opportunity to show God's love to others pass us by. Let today be the day give our lives. Let's give our lives to Christ in service and in love. Let today be the day. Let's start today. All right, let's pray. Gracious God, we, we ask that you be with us today. Help us to take your call to service and act upon it. Help us to make our lives lives of service. Help our eyes to see those in need, even when sometimes we might be the ones in need. Help our ears to hear the cry of the oppressed and the hungry and the hurting. Turn our hearts to the service of our neighbors. Because as it says in our gospel for today, through serving them, we serve you. And Lord, help us to be your hands in the world. Hands that reach out in love and peace and mercy. Thank you for all that you do. Help us to always grow closer to you and help us all to wrap this whole world in the loving arms of God. Amen. And remember, God loves you and so do I. Have a great week.
Be thou my wisdom and thou my true word. I ever with thee and thou with me, Lord. Thou my great Father, I thy true Son. Thou in me dwelling and I with Sword for my fight, be thou my dignity, thou my delight, thou my soul shelter, thou my high tower. Praise thou me heavenward, O power of my power. With that, I invite you to confess the faith of the Church using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Made children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of community, we pray for the church around the world. Unite us in our love for you. Help us overcome our divisions that we are encouraged to work together for your sake. Lord, in your mercy. God of creation, we pray for this hurting earth, awaken in us a new desire to care for the world and empower us to support those agencies, organizations, and individuals who work to heal our environment. Lord, in your mercy. God of cooperation, we pray for nations of the world embroiled in conflict, Inspire leaders to listen to each other and work toward peaceful solutions to disagreements. Protect the vulnerable, especially children, who cannot find safety in their home or country. Lord, in your mercy. God of comfort, we pray for all who live with mental or physical illness. Help them find appropriate care. Bring healing and wholeness when the path forward seems bleak. And be with all those who rest heavy on our hearts and are in our minds, those on our prayer list those we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. God of compassion, we pray for the young people of this congregation. Renew us in your call to welcome the children in our midst. As they grow, strengthen their faith and our commitment to them. Lord, in your mercy. God of consolation, we give you thanks for our loved ones who have died and pray for all who grieve today, especially those grieving the recent losses of Jean and Edie. Shine your grace on all your saints, Lord, in your mercy. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And as you take a moment to share a greeting of peace, I'll remind you that our offerings come in through several venues. And as we pray together here, we're giving thanks for those gifts given and received, however they were given and received. So with that, let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. People of God, you are Christ's body, bringing new life to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. The living word dwells in you. Thanks be to God. Help us to lay aside all envy and understanding as your servants. I bet that's supposed to say misunderstanding. <laughs> nope, it's supposed to say selfish ambition. I have no idea how I ended up <laughs> with understandings. So hopefully I remember to fix that. Hey kids, it's Pastor Scott. This is the 17th Sunday after Pentecost, and this is our children's message for today. Glad you're with us. All right. So in our gospel lesson for today, Jesus is talking to the disciples about what it means to be the greatest in the kingdom. And the disciples have been kind of talking, oh, I want to be the best and I think I should be number one. And, and they were having a little bit of an argument and <laughs> Jesus steps in to kind of put that argument to bed. And he tells them that being the best, the greatest in the kingdom of God doesn't mean being first. Being first means being the greatest servant. That's right. Be the greatest servant. So what does that mean for us? Well, I think I have a story to share. So from this last Olympics, uh, the men's 800, uh, there was an American runner named Isaiah Jewett. And he was running. He was in the finals. And it looked like he was probably going to be a shoe-in to get second, which second at the Olympics is pretty darn good. <laughs> That's amazing. And another runner from Botswana, whose name was Amos, got his feet tangled up with Isaiah's feet, and they both fell to the track. So going from what looked like a for sure silver medal at the Olympics with the fastest people in the world, they were both now going to come in last. The question is, what do you do in that moment? Because there's going to be times when we're going to do our best and we're not going to come in first, but we can still do something good. We can still help out those around us. And so what Isaiah did in that moment was he looked back at Amos and he said, let's finish the race together. Now, he was disappointed, for sure. Amos apologized. But the two of them, in a uh, act of sportsmanship, uh, came together to the finish line. And Amos decided in the last moment, because... He had uh, maybe caused the fall, stepped back so that uh, Jewett would finish ahead of him. But uh, it's one of those things. In, in this life, we should always try our best. I hope that you always do your best, no matter what you do. 
Because I think that's what we're called to do. As people, as Christians, we're called to do the best that we can with whatever project we're doing. Maybe it's school. Maybe it's, you know, a project at home. Whatever it might be, do your best, always. Maybe it's a race. Who knows? But there's going to be opportunities in your life when you can make a difference for somebody else. And I know that that day that Isaiah Jewett made a difference to Nigel Amos. And uh, I hope that we can find and look for those opportunities too. It doesn't have to be in a race. Maybe it's, you know, maybe it's something around your community where you see that you have an opportunity to help and make a difference to lift up somebody else. Maybe you have an opportunity to serve at your local food pantry, or maybe you uh, can help uh, pick up an uh, area of the road around where you live, because all those things make a difference. Maybe you can spend some time helping out somebody in your congregation or just in your community who has a little bit harder time picking up leaves in the fall. All of those things make a difference. So look for those opportunities because God will definitely put them in your life. And I hope that you have a fantastic week this week. I hope that uh, things at school are going well, whether that's in person or online. And I truly pray that uh, you stay healthy and that your family stays healthy. And I'm just keeping you all in my prayers. Well, that said, let's say a quick prayer. Gracious God. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for uh, all of our amazing kids, their families, their parents, grandparents, siblings. Lord, I just ask that you watch over all of us. Help us to see opportunities where we can serve, where we can make a difference in our communities, in our homes, and uh, help us to see those opportunities. Also encourage us, Lord, on those days when it's it's going to be a tough day, to do our best, to to do our best in whatever we do. Lord, thank you, Lord, for all that you do, all the blessings that you give. Continue to watch over us and be with us every day. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all. And remember, God loves you. So do I. Have a great week.